maybe I'll go ahead and read the um, the script for the um, COVID authorization to hold a meeting electronically, and that'll give a little more time for other folks to, to join in here. So as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and Act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform. And all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired participate in this meeting. And you can find the links either um, on the town website or on the posted um, agendas throughout the town or by contacting the town clerk to specifically um, send you a link for that. So is Dan recording this meeting? It, it says it's recording, yes. It says it's recording and we also have Orca Media uh, on the line here too. Yep. And the Herald. <laughs> and the Herald. So um and that Although, the, said, that said, I will um, hand the helm over to Dan and, and open the informational meeting um, in advance of uh, Rochester's modern town meeting and by Australian ballot this year. So take it away, Dan. Okay. Thanks, Stu. And I don't see anyone in the waiting room right now. So I think we're all present and accounted for. Um, for those that don't uh, know me, I'm Dan McKinley. I'm the uh, elected town moderator. And um, the select board has asked me to just facilitate, moderate this meeting, uh, this evening, this informational meeting. So I'm going to start with um, uh, reading the warning um, notice and the agenda for the public informational hearings. Legal voters of the town of Rochester hereby notified and warned the select board for the town of Rochester will hold two public informational meeting hearings on Monday, February 22nd, and Thursday, February 25th at 6 p.m. Purpose is informational hearings, review and discuss articles 11 through 31 as presented in the FY, in the, um, excuse me, 2021 town of Rochester annual meeting warning. These public informational hearings will be conducted via Zoom for information on how to connect. Um, you've already found that clearly. Um, voting on all articles presented on the warning, including the election of officers, will take place by Australian ballot on Monday, March 1st, 2021. For information on the annual meeting and the Australian ballot voting, please see the warning and notices to voters herewith on page seven and eight. Um, so um, note that we are covering articles 11 through 31 this evening and for um, clarification for information about these articles, um, opportunity to ask questions at the select board, we will not be covering those articles which will be electing um, officials to the town. Those will be on the ballots on March 1st. Um, and with uh, what um, I want to remind folks that you know, we'll continue, we'll follow Robert's rules of order, wait to be recognized. Uh, there are how many of us, 28 of us in the meeting. So do my best to recognize you as you wave your hand or if you um, can see on the bottom um, tool panel, I'll call it, um, there's a button called reactions. You can hit that and then there's a um, raise your hand function on there. If you want to raise your hand, I'll try and call on folks as I, I see you raise your hand. The folks that are on the phone, um, it's going to be a little more difficult. So you might just have to sort of blurt out or try and try and fit in. And um, we'll all be um, courteous and let each other uh, fit in as best we can. Um, uh, if folks have a lot to say, um, in the interest of time, we're going to leave uh, as we do a town meeting, maximize anyone's um, time 
with the microphone to, to five minutes. That would be a long time for an informational meeting, just uh, so that we have, leave time for everyone to get uh, an opportunity to speak. Um, let's see what else I have in my notes. Um, I think that's it. And I think what we'll do is just uh, or in an orderly fashion, go through each of the articles and ask for questions, clarifications, um, for the uh, for select board or, or town officers. Any questions on how we're going to work through this? Uh, we got one in the waiting room. Hang on. All right. Um, so first on our list was um, Article 11. Uh, shall the term of the town clerk be changed to three years effective in 2022 pursuant to a state law? Um, any questions? So it might be um, it might be helpful. Uh, there's some background noise if folks mute their microphones until it's they're ready to speak. Because the big deal is the background voting. It sounds like Manzanita's got a uh, <laughs> some background noise there. If folks, I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thanks. All right. Any questions about the uh, town clerk um, term? One. Uh, um, all right, well, I move on here in some background noise. And um, when someone's beginning to speak or if they've got background noise, your box lights up. So I can see that on the phone numbers, the people that are calling in, I can see your phone number, the box lights up. That way I might um, know that you're trying to speak or or maybe you need to uh, mute your microphone um, so we can hear your background noise. Um, let's go on to um, what will be Article 12. Shall the uh, term of the town treasurer be changed to three years? Questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. Hearing none, we'll be moving right along through most of these, I'm sure. Um, Article 13, shall the voters authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in four installments, um, August 16th, um, November 15th, February 14th, uh, May 16th, um, by the delivery of the tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates? Anything, anything. Seeing nothing, hearing nothing. Moving right along then. Um, article 15 or article 14, shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,095,641.25 uh, of which 766,833 shall be raised by taxes. Anyone? I'll, I'll say something. I'll just thank the, um, the um, budget and finance committee for all the hard work they did to um, come up with this number and then to make it as real and as um, efficient as possible. And so um, I thank you all for all the hard work on putting this together. Let me just check the waiting room again. I don't see anybody. All right. Article 15 will be, shall the voters appropriate $45,625 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. I don't see any um, 
just a housekeeping thing here. I'm seeing that I have, there are two panels of, of screens and I'm only able to see one of them. I don't know why I can't see the other. Let me try something different. Okay, there it is. So I'll try and toggle back and forth between the two panels to look for people's hands raised and Um, okay, I'll say something again then that um, okay. that this number for the library is level funded from last year, which was a, a big help in keeping the budget um, um, keeping it um, moderate. So thank you for that library folks. Dan, I've got a quick general question, if I may. No, go ahead. This is Lizzie Shackelford here. Um, I just, um, and we are fairly new, just in for a couple of years now to town, so I'm not sure how the informational meeting and the, and the town meeting usually go, but um, are, are on any of these issues, are there, are people planning to kind of give the yays and nays to them, not, not vote on them, but kind of comment on any of the, you know, whether these, because we're getting amounts, but you know, I appreciate that Dune just chimed in on this amount is more or less or stays the same from, from before. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any information that helps people um, you know, know whether these are you know, good things to, to vote for or not. As a general question, but just given this weird yeah. format, I'm not sure how it normally goes. Yeah. Yeah, Lizzie, I think it, it is a weird format. And it's, I mean, typically um, at the informational meeting, it's not a place where we um, you know, go into um, a deep um, discussion about the merits of the article. It's uh, primarily for information, um, like stuff like doing the sharing. Um, I don't know if others have thoughts on that. Um, yeah, Pat. Um, Patty Hawes, I have two two observations for Lizzie. Number one, if you go a couple of pages later in the in the um, warning, you'll find the notes from last year. So that's an easy way to compare these numbers to what we did last year. And then, of course, for each one of these departments, and there's a there's a full page report somewhere in the in the warning. Um, excuse me, Dan. Can I ask a question quickly? Sure, Martha. Um, I had to leave the room for a little while, I'm sorry, um, but it was necessary. So um, have we just, as Article 15, the library, have we gotten any farther past that or? No, that's where we are right okay. now. And have there been any um, significant remarks about any of the other articles? Um, no, there hasn't okay. been any any questions or anything. Um, Dune just um, uh, noted that the library number was, uh, that was level funded, right, Dune? Yeah, I believe so. Thank yep. you very much, sorry to. Oh, uh, yeah, Pat, go ahead. Thank you. Um, on your on your Rochester town report, uh, forty six is the annual report from the library trustee. And on page forty seven are all of the budget figures from last year, well, two years ago, last year, and this year. So uh, you have that all laid in front of you on forty six and forty seven. Right. I mean, and I, I appreciate that. That's definitely helpful. I was just wondering if there's like any, you know, kind of we're doing this because, you know, because our budget is small. We're doing, yeah, if any, if there was going to be any explanation for the decisions that came in, but I guess this probably isn't the, isn't the place for that, but I'll just, I'll, I'll well, do that. I appreciate that. It is, yeah. it is the place for that if you have a specific question. Yeah. But, um, no. Yeah, at a re Lizzie, at a regular town meeting in the auditorium, that's when people would get up and, and ask questions and get answers, et cetera. Okay. So yeah. So if um, you know if some of these numbers are up or down or or, or if they're flat, it might be helpful if um, the select board or any budget committee could say you know um, why that was or you know, if you wanted to add any color to the to the article uh, might be helpful for folks. It is a little bit uh, strange because we will not be able to have um, that that um, 
um, discussion that we usually do at town meeting that lets us know how our friends are thinking about these um, articles, but um, that's the uh, state of state of the town. All right, I'm going to move on to um, the next uh, to Article 16, which was is uh, shall the voters appropriate $69,479 to provide ambulance service from White River Valley Ambulance. Um, you want to make the seven six seven four two four eight or ask them to yeah go. if um whoever has the uh, phone number ending in four two four eight um you've got a lot of background um, noise going on um uh, if you can mute that would be great then i won't have to mute you and you'll be able to speak when you're ready go ahead pat um, I was just commenting on this that the uh, on page 40, we don't have page 30, 38, um, the appropriations are laid out as to what they were two years ago last year and this year if, if somebody wanted to look. Um, last year the uh, White River Ambulance was 68,340. And this year it's 69,479. So it's just a modest, modest increase. About a thousand from last year. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, Frank. Yeah, it just should be noted that the only thing the select board really has any control over there is the Article 14. All these other ones are put in. The library is on their own. Uh, the uh, White River Ambulance, they do their own budget. We don't have any control over those. So that should be noted. Okay, thanks Frank. I'll keep us uh, moving along as long as I don't hear any, um, see any hands raising or anyone shouting out. Um, Article 17, shall the voters vote to appropriate $20,400 to continue funding the uh, Fast Trash Recycling Program. Uh, receipts of recycling and trash with residents paying for trash per bag um, from July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Um, Dan? Yes, Frank, go ahead. I believe that one was level funded also. Okay. Is that correct, Noon? Yeah, I think so. And and also, I um, I think I read something recently that now you have to pay for recycling if you take it to the transfer station. I don't know if anyone else saw that. So if that's the case, this makes it an even... Um, even better. Uh, even better deal for, the, for us in that, yeah. yeah. Nancy. You'll have to pay um, at Bethel now for recycling. And this does make it quite attractive for us here. Uh, being quite friendly. There is also in here a report from the Bethel transfer station and a list of their charges, including the recycling, which I think is $3 a visit. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. The only thing we pay for here with our recycling is um, I pay $3 a bag for actual trash, but the rest right. we have to pay for. So I think it's good. And they're very, very pleasant, accommodating people. All right, I'm gonna move on. Article 18, shall the voters vote to appropriate 8,000 to continue funding the town building reserve fund.
Is this um, up or down or about what, what we've done previously? I think it's, um, is this the tad down? Didn't we do 10,000 last year? It, we wish it was much higher, but this was mm -hmm. one of the tools we used to keep the, the increase in the budget to a minimum. Yeah, there's, um, we could use four times as much in that, in that fund. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move on. Article, article 19, shall the voters vote to appropriate uh, $1,000 to continue funding the tennis court reserve fund. Go ahead, Nancy. Well, just for information, we've been doing this um, every year and we're trying to keep the surfaces of the tennis court um, in good shape. Um, the courts were redone in 2012, I believe, and but we're seeing wear and tear on them and our our estimates on having them resurfaced are upwards of um, seven or eight thousand dollars. So we're just trying to put money aside on, on an annual basis to work toward that amount. Okay. All right. Thank you, Nancy. All right, moving on to Article 21, and um, I had a question um, for the select board. We used to vote all these um, funding, all these agencies and groups as one. Um, and we've switched that um, at the uh, request of townsfolk or how, how did that come about? Pat? You're muted, Pat. I believe that came about when they changed the, uh, the town meeting rules uh, regarding COVID. Um, that they came, it came so that we were required to vote on each and every article separate. Um, and so we will probably get back to that once we get back to normal. Frank? Yeah, one of the reasons why we did it is because you can't, you can't alter any of these figures that we put in on the voting. Um, these are gonna be all straight up yes or no questions when you vote for this. So we felt it wouldn't be appropriate if we lumped everything together and put them all as, as just one article to vote on. So that's why we put them all separate. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll go through them one at a time. Shall the voters vote to appropriate um, the requested sum of $3,000 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging. Okay, 21. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $2,066 to the Clara Martin Center? I just wanna make a, a comment. Okay, Julie. Um, the numbers for the appropriations have stayed pretty level, so they haven't in increased in any way. Okay. Nancy, was there something you? No, I was going to say that too. Okay, all right. Uh, was there a hand raised from the, from the phone, from the 4248 number? No, okay. Um, Article 22, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $100 to the Green Up Vermont? Seeing none, hearing no questions, moving on. Shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $9,849 to the Quintown Senior Center? Okay. Uh, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to the Orange County Parent Child Center? 
Moving right along, speedy. 25, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to Safeline Inc. Good. Article 26, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $1,300 to Tri-Valley Transit, formerly Stagecoach. Okay. Article 27, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $100 to Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant. And Article 28, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $4,800 to Visiting Nurse Association. Cruising. Article 29, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of 800 and... Oh, okay. I saw a comma there, but it... Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> $875 um, to the White River Partnership. No questions. Article 30, shall the voters vote to appropriate the requested sum of $250 to Women's Safe? Right. Article 31, shall the town of Rochester be required to inform its residents when sources of radiation, such as that from cell towers, and 5G antennas are being proposed for installation installation within its town limits. Um, I right, see um, the phone. I, I see, I see a phone lighting up. Um, four four six nine number. Did you have something there? No. Um, Dan. Go ahead, Martha. I found it confusing because I thought the town did let people know, uh, I thought that kind of thing was public information when it was proposed, but. Um... It, it, it is actually anything that is proposed gets um, put up on the bulletin board in town. And if anyone um, pays attention to the, the planning board meetings or minutes that that's all public, public knowledge, I guess what this is um, requesting, should we go farther than that? Um, well, I, I, I can, this is Deb Moore. I can um, make a little statement about that if you'd like me to, to explain yeah. where the rationale comes from. Go, go ahead, Deb. So in um, cities all around Vermont, uh, the telecom companies are in fact placing, deploying, um, cell phone towers and uh, small cell antennas, which are meant to convey 5G in, into homes. And the infrastructure is going up. And I think in some cases, the towers have been completed. Um, I'm not sure about that, but at, at least it's, it's ongoing and all over the place. And in many of these places, the citizens just don't know. They're, they have not been informed or they have, they have not been informed clearly enough. So what this is trying to do is to make sure that that will be the case. Um, and I've prepared a short little explanation about the rationale of this article. If, should I do that? Should I say that? Um, well, if there um, are any questions, any qu go ahead, Pat. Well, there's four minutes left. Deb has four minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Just be a couple minutes. So yep. this, this article should be considered as a right to know question for improving the communication between our town government and its citizens whenever a telecom industry giant submits a proposal for new wireless infrastructure to be deployed. Uh, why? Well, 
there is a time factor involved for citizens to have any agency concerning placement of cell towers and small cell antennas in our community. Our town government has the legal right to make decisions about the placement of wireless infrastructure. And those of us who petitioned want, to, want that right to be respected and facilitated by our town office. Mm -hmm. So we are not a special interest group. Um, the, there's the concern about impacts of wireless infrastructure is a public interest shared by many. In just a few days during a week of severe cold in a mid-January pandemic, over 50 registered voters in Rochester signed our petition. Our belief is that a citizen should have the right to know and the right to have a say about what goes up in our neighborhood. Aesthetic impacts can affect property values and with the new small cell antennas, thousands of studies document serious health impacts to humans as well as bird feeds and trees. We don't need another health crisis. What we do need is internet connectivity that follows well thought out safety standards. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Nancy. Have I missed something? Is there something going up in this town that I'm not aware of? And is that why this article is on here? <coughs> no, this is, this is preemptive. This is trying to get ahead of the game because the telecom companies are basically, they really are sneaking in and just doing this very quietly everywhere. That is the problem. And luckily, I think we've, we've, it hasn't been happening here that I know of, but it's just kind of preemptive. I mean, it's going on in Granville right now. They're trying to do two gi giant cell phone towers in Granville. So we're just trying to be up on it a little bit more and say, you know, hey, let's just all be aware of what's going on and, and so we can all have a say about this. So I guess a uh, question I have is, is to what extent is the town notified? Something like a cell phone tower, of course, that's a big invisible and invisible, but the um, smaller um, sub antennas, is, is that something that these companies tell the town about anyway? I mean, how is the town to be guaranteed that they, they know Oh, that's a good question. I think what they have to do is they have to apply to the town for permits. And there's a whole lot of um, uh, uh, jurisdiction. There's a whole lot of things that that the towns can do to have some regulation over these. And most towns are not aware that they have these powers. And so, I mean, that's down the road a little bit more. But I mean, I think that's how it starts. The telecom companies come to the town and ask permission or get, to get permits. This it's just going on everywhere. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of thinking that uh, this will be like a fourth or fifth check mark on um, on the process. Um, I believe that they have to go through the public service board in order to place the cell tower in Vermont. Um, and then they also have to apply through Act 250 um, to go through, uh, get, get into the state. Of, and um, the our own planning board. So um, this this would be a fourth check mark to ensure that the public is aware um, because the public service board does uh, open meetings, information meetings. Um, Act 250 is also a very transparent organization. Um, and we meet all the time. Um, and the planning commission meets once a month. So um, either this would be a fourth or fifth check mark to make sure that people are aware. That's all. I'm well, yeah, well, locally, but also I think the telecom companies have been basically steamrolling this thing and through a lot of these things. They, they, it, that's really been happening. So uh, it, if they, that's a good way to put it, I guess, that it's a fifth check mark, you know, just to make sure. If, um, if I could um, take my moderator hat off for one minute and speak as a planning commission member over the past, I would say, I don't know, I'll say six or so years, maybe eight years, 
there have been two tel cell towers proposed um, in town and have gone through um, the planning commission. We have had uh, hearings on them and provided input to the public service board and neither one of them was constructed. So um, right. the planning commission that. does have that, um, that responsibility to review those and that's done through a, uh, a hearing that town members um, can look for. Um, Mark um, Alexander has a hand up. Mark? Um, yeah. Hi, um, a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, some of the newer um, wireless communication systems that um, companies like AT&T are starting to build are not giant cell towers. They're actually small boxes that are mounted on like telephone poles in town. So I believe that they're, because they are so small, they're actually able to bypass some of the regulations involving cell towers. So and I think that's that's another reason why it's useful for us to be aware of these things uh, being built in our town because they actually may not uh, uh, you know have some of the check marks that you were talking about earlier mm -hmm. um, and and I just wanted to add that um, we can treat this as sort of a, an issue of commons I mean if we were if we knew that a company was planning to build say um, like a power plant on the edge of town we would want to know about that because it involves you know po uh, potential um, if it, you know, effects on our commons, such as our atmosphere. So I think we, one way of thinking about this proposal, um, Article 31, is to think about in terms of commons and the way we would think about other large projects um, that would affect our commons. Barb? I guess it's a question of uh, the timing of a notification in the sense that you may not necessarily have to be fourth, fifth, or sixth, but maybe the first go around when something is proposed or thought about being proposed to the town or the planning board, that would be the time, in my view, to say, okay, we are now in the process of looking at this, as opposed to we have looked at it, we're considering it, and now we'll let you know about it. So to me, any indication, whether small boxes or big boxes or any other major um, intercom or whatever you want to call it, facility, uh, could, could go out immediately. Um, so it's a not a yay or nay situation. It's just a timing that says this is what's going on. And this is the time maybe to be aware of it. And then the discussion can follow as the process continues. <coughs> is that a yay or a nay, Matt? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions, comments on this? Um, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Hi, this is Jonna Murray. Um, I was just going to make a quick comment. Um, I helped get a lot of signatures, out, or a few, <laughs> and I just feel like, I, I just wanna make sure that it's never construed as that this is somehow a bill to stop something. It's basically just, as everybody has said so eloquently, um, a right to know and to leave it at that. And for everybody who said, well, there's already, there's already measures to inform the public, um, that's all true. And so then that's great, but if, but then, this just adds another mechanism for people to be informed. And so I would just say it feels like it's, you know, too much. There's nothing wrong with people being overly informed, if anything, if that's even a negative thing, which I think it's a positive thing. So anybody who might be against it, I would wonder why they were opposing people just being informed. Um, and so I think it can't be anything but good for our public, our public good of our town to to be informed citizens and to know what's going on and and to be active. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark, your hand is still up or is it up again? Okay. Dan, I have a quick question, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, Lizzie, yeah. I, I, Unclear if these smaller antennas, if the town actually gets notice about that, it seems like it's unclear. And I guess my question is somebody who has, who has uh, chatted with a few people about the, this being an unnecessary extra layer is, is what the burden would be on and the expectation would be on our, our select board to meet this new notification requirement if it's something above and beyond what we're already meeting. But my biggest question, concern is, you know, what is the obligation if, if these small antennas 
are being put on, you know, let's say private property. I mean, I, I imagine when they installed our 5G that we have a small antenna outside. Like, is that something that the town gets notified of and then would be required to inform others of as well? So I'm just curious, um, you know, if there's an extra burden for our town to then have to find out what the, what the companies are doing, you know, with very small antennas that are related to private property. And I just don't know the answer. It's, that's my question. It's not a lobbying one way or the other. I'm just not sure. I don't, uh, Deb Moore, I don't know for sure about this, Lizzie, but I don't think it's as simple as that, that people can just go putting 5G things privately on their property. Because I think there's a lot of in infrastructure involved, a lot of infrastructure involved. So I think it's a town thing. And I don't think like one person in the town can get 5G mm -hmm. and nobody else. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I'm not positive that I just said spoof, but I think I did. Um, um, and the other thing I just wanted to say about the uh, small things, um, they're not so small. I mean, there are these things that are on telephone poles or anywhere in front of a house, but if there's nothing to put it on, they can put them in right in front of houses without telling people there's a, a picture that got sent around just a couple of weeks ago of this couple in Texas, I think, who woke up one day to find a giant thing right on their front lawn. I mean, this big, giant, rectangular thing. And that had something to do with 5G. They didn't know about it. They didn't ask about it. They, I mean, did nobody ask them? It was really hideous. There's, there's a lot of infrastructure involved. And it also includes you know, cutting down trees and just all kinds of things that are involved with setting up infrastructure for 5G. It's very complicated and, and awful, actually. You mean they could just put that on somebody's private property without any? Yes, apparently that's what's been happening. Apparently, yes. I mean, that's because where my question comes in. Like, our has 5G. I remember when EC Fiber came in, they're like, hey, we've now got 5G here. And we have we have 5G and we we have regular. I don't know a lot about how this works, but like for example, you know, Dan or June or, or Pat, like, did 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 EC Fiber come to you all and say we we want to extend 5G down this street that's in Rochester? And so then you know would that be? I, I just don't know you know which kind of level of antennas we're talking about. I guess so that's no, why. I'm no, no, no. Could I could I just answer that? The, EC Fiber does fiber optics. They would have nothing to do with 5G. And that's certainly not at this point. They're the opposite of 5G. You want, you want fiber optics to your house. If you get fiber optics to your house, you're really lucky you get the best, safest, clearest reception. And um, that's, what, that's what everybody should be going for. That's not the same as 5G. 5G is wireless. Well, that wireless. might be some of the com uh, complication. EC Fiber, provides us with what they market as 5G wireless in our house. So I, I just don't understand which parts this, you know, this notification would apply to. And that's why the language to me, it raises some concerns about what exactly are we, are we, are we applying it to, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, Mary, Mary McGrath, do you wanna go next? If you want to over our time limit, pardon me. Are we over our time limit? No, or? we're not doing a time limit on a topic. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Yep. Um, go ahead, Mary. Sorry. Um, we also have EC fiber, and when it was installed, we had a dead spot, which was right where our television was, and the normal hookup for EC fiber is 4G. The guy came out, spent all morning here, and he put. He gave us a second option and that is labeled 5G. And I said the same thing. I said, this is 5G, uh, like we're hearing about um, that's gonna go up on telephone poles. He said, no, it's totally different. It allows for a stronger signal in a shorter distance, which is pretty much what 5G will be, is all about when they, they have strong signals that go from one telephone pole to another but this really has nothing to do, as Deb says, with, um, with the 5G um, system that, that everybody is talking about that would be external, that would be for cell phones primarily. That's my understanding. All right. All right. Thanks, Mary. Uh, Mark, did you want to go again? 
Uh, yes, there's some confusion about the terminology 5G. Um, the 5G that EC Fiber is talking about refers to um, a, a Wi-Fi signal uh, frequency. There, there, that is a five. That's a 5G. In that case, refers to five gigahertz. It has to do with routers in the house. Um, it's a um, it's a faster it's a faster Wi-Fi than was previously used, which is sometimes called 2.4G. Um, it, it's unfortunate confusion, but it has absolutely nothing to do with 5G cellular systems. There's, it's, they're completely different. So there's no, so fi, uh, EC Fiber is not connected in any way with a 5G cellular service. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> nice to have somebody who knows what he's talking about. Thank you. <laughs> My addition on that then is you'd have to find a way to make that clear so that somebody doesn't come to our select board and say, our neighbors have a that this teeny tiny 5G antenna. Why wasn't I notified about that? Because that's related to something different, if that, if that makes sense. All right, um, sounds like we've um, got as many questions as we have answers there, but um, I think um, folks look like you're ready to move on. Um, that's the last article that we were going to um, go over during the informational meeting. And now we'll move into the regular select board meeting. <clears throat> 